Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop and to the channel. You're here with Ben and Billy over here at Hockman Fabrication Speed. Next episode, the second episode on the Tesla Swap Evo. We're just about getting ready to get started, trying to make some progress on this. Before we go and jump into that though, I did want to address a couple of key points that I feel like I need to address given all the feedback and the comments that came up from the original video that was posted on this project. As you know, Hockman Fabrication and Speed is heavily dedicated to the import racing scene, which includes, of course, Mitsubishi being that we built a lot of them, including our own Black Zenith Evo, which is still a combustion engine. We fully support that platform. And for that reason, we wanna make it clear that we you know, don't have anything against combustion engines. We are simply here to support a customer who has contracted us to help them with this particular project. The customer has come up with this idea themselves and has also removed the powertrain themselves. We are simply here to help them build the subframes and anything chassis related in order to make this conversion possible. So just want to make that clear. So if any of you guys have any negative feelings towards this, we get it. We respect that. But being that we think this is a cool idea and this is something that may fit into our business model in the future, given the fact that electric vehicles are going to be coming in the future and who knows we may all be given an ultimatum at some point that says you either have to pay a large fee to keep your combustion engine or you have to either buy an electric vehicle or convert your own so this may be where we can offset some of those transitions like for instance we make a lot of our business on building exhaust systems and custom exhaust systems that's going to go away if electric vehicles become a thing so being a business owner, we've got to keep this in mind and think about where we are going to fit in the industry when that may come. And this is one of those things that may help support our business. So understand that's where we're coming from when it comes to this project. Certainly we want to support everyone's best interests and this particular customer has a good idea, I think, and came to us, asked if we'd be willing to help. And so that's what brings us here today. So. If you guys can please be considerate of the fact that, you know, we understand there's some negative, you know, negative feelings towards this particular transition, but go into it with a positive mindset like we are, and you never know, you may be pleasantly surprised on the back end how this turns out. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and dive into the project. Just want to let you guys know that we support everything 4G63, Mitsubishi Evo related. We're not just trying to push everything electric. We're simply supporting this individual customer at this time with the dream that they've come up with and that's what we're going to do so appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel with notifications on along with all the rest of our social media channels if you guys want to stay up to speed on not only this project but other projects that are going to be in the shop you never know what's going to be coming through we don't just cater to one make and model and yeah so we appreciate you guys support Appreciate you guys tuning into the channel and hope that you guys are appreciating and liking what you see with what we do with this particular project. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and jump into this and see if we can get some development. First thing we've got to do is we've got to figure out how we want to mount the rear and front drive units on the vehicle. Right now, we just have the rear and front drive units on the ground. And we need to get one of them, and I think we're gonna start with the rear, onto this transmission jack so that we can properly level and position this rear engine, rear electric motor, I should say, into the proper position for us to start mock-up. So what we've got is a cherry picker or an engine hoist, which is gonna help us safely get that into position. And that's the first task at hand for us now. These things each weigh a little under 200 pounds a piece. So with it being just Billy and I here, we certainly don't want to be stressing ourselves or hurting ourselves over the process. So that's where this comes into play.
here, buddy. See you later. Have a nice one. Alright, hear that? Number one. Put it in. Alright, so we've got the rear drive unit on the trans jack. I've used some rubber padding to help make sure that we don't scratch up anything. Because I know this is a fairly new unit. It's brand new uh, to the customer. But, uh, yeah. We're just winging it as we go, keeping you guys posted along the way. Ben, Billy, and Armin here. What we're doing right now is actually taking off a section or a housing for that matter on the rear drive unit. As we've evaluated the geometry, we've realized that we may have some clearance issues in the rear side at least because of the rear subframes and the way that the control arms are designed. We want to make sure that we don't compromise any of that geometry. And although we can, of course, change out and modify the lower control arms and go with adjustable ones. We want to try and make this easily accommodating with existing hardware on the vehicle as possible. Not only for Harman, but also for those of you that may potentially consider doing something like this in the future. So he's informed us that based on the interior design of this housing, you can actually remove it and run it externally, which would open up some space. This is apparently possible on both the front and the rear drive unit, and that's what we're going to explore at this time. remove this outer housing you can see just how small this rear drive unit is and has opened up a tremendous amount more space for us when it comes to the geometry and figuring out how we're going to fit within the subframe brackets and make sure that the geometry of the control arms is not compromised so we're going to go ahead and reposition it on this trans jack and get back up into the mock-up scenario, see what we can do. Okay, so now that we have that exterior housing off, it's really helped us in the rear. The front, I don't think we're gonna have to deal with that on. Also, Armin was kind enough to bring us the axles that are for Tesla, which he has. They will need to be cut accordingly, but for right now, where we are in the mock-up phase is, we've got the drive unit resituated on the jack and under the vehicle position in what we consider to be the best position we can have it in um, what I'm using here is some stainless steel filler rod to just sort of mock up without having to deal with the weight of the axle where everything's gonna need to be this is of course just sort of a rough mock-up but it enables me to know that I have the geometry correct between where the axles need to be so just giving you guys a quick peek on both sides here to see that we've got things pretty well lined up i mean this one's on a little bit of an angle but we'll adjust accordingly this is just to get things again mocked up and lined up where we need them to so we know confidently that all the geometry is close enough where we can fine tune it when we actually do build our mouse and our tabs so as far as the positioning of the motor, it is a little bit further forward than we were hoping and expecting. That's just based on the available space and how the Evo is engineered for its original drivetrain. The biggest issue is 
the clearance above when trying to get the axles lined up accordingly. If we were to try and put this unit on a bit of an angle, it would cause lower cl clearance issues and have really low, um, you know, the drive unit would sit extremely low, which would not be desirable and could have issues on the road. And accordingly, if we were to put an angle the opposite direction to achieve angle to achieve axle geometry, then we would have upper clearance issues. So this is the position that we've got it in. And what we're going to do accordingly is work off of the subframe that Armin, the customer, had uh, partially built from Dan at Diamond Race. Uh, he builds front and rear subframes for the Mitsubishis and the Evos, which I happen to have on my own vehicle front and rear. And what Armin did was contact him and have him basically build a partial rear subframe for himself for this project. So what it has is the rear control arms are already set up with their geometry and all the bracketry and bolted to the frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to triangulate off of that and build the subframe that's going to actually hold this drive unit motor. So we have had discussions about why am I going to work off of Dan's rear control arm brackets as opposed to build my own. Well, the reason we end up having to take off that uh, housing off of the rear drive unit is primarily because of clearance. And even if we left that drive unit housing on, and I built my own brackets, we still would have the clearance issues that we're having now just because the control arms are where they are. Now, yes, we could get adjustable control arms, um, but the point of this whole deal was that we wanted to make this applicable to more than just Armin's vehicle. We wanted to design this in a way that would accommodate any other Evo if they wanted to do this in the future. So with that being said, we're trying to keep things as simple as possible. Apologize for the fan in the background. It's getting cold out here in Chicagoland. But uh, if we start worrying about, you know, control arms and adding to the scope, then it starts to move outside of what's a reasonable expectation. And there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of things that we haven't even uncovered yet that are going to add to the cost of the scope. So we're trying to minimize the cost where possible. We do realize that running the drive unit on the actual, or run, running that housing on the drive unit as opposed to remotely is going to be what would be most desirable, of course. But when it comes to custom applications like this, it's just one of those things that is the nature of the beast. You're going to have to make some changes to what may have been considered standard or original design in order to accommodate what we're doing. So that's one small sacrifice we have to make and it's something we can certainly accommodate down the road when it comes to designing the rest of the electrical system based on what Armin has told me. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and work on triangulating this particular setup. What we've done so far is take some chromoly material, which if you'd be so kind as to hold the light for me, which we have started to bevel already. And we're gonna go ahead and triangulate off of this bracket here. And we're gonna to go to one and a half inch chromoly tube. And then that's gonna serve as our primary main subframe. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make this thing bolt in and bolt out. So that uh, for both research and development as well as future application, needs are concerned we'll be able to work with this on you know further development as well as reproduction for many others that may be interested in the future so it's a lot of talking for right now let's go ahead and get started with some work <laughs> 